This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Thursday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news of some very large global tensions starting to boil hotter. But first, mortgage applications in the US rose by 0.9% in the second week of June, extending the 16% surge of the previous week, which was the sharpest weekly increase since the start of 2023. The monitoring of the benchmark 30-year mortgage rate showed it slipped below 7% last week, its lowest since late March. And the NAHB Wells Fargo Housing Market Index in the US fell in June from May and to below market expectations. It was the lowest reading since December 2023, attributed to mortgage rates remaining around 7%. However, it is back at about its average level since mid-2022. The industry also said home builders there are also dealing with higher rates for construction and development loans, chronic labour shortages still, and a dearth of buildable lots. In Japan, their huge agricultural bank, Noron Chukun, has said it has made a massive mistake in its bond portfolio, betting that rates would stay down. They haven't, and it said it would unwind its positions between now and March 31. That'll involve selling 10 trillion yen's worth of US and European sovereign bonds and take an expected 1.5 trillion yen's worth of loss for the year. Japanese exports surged in May, a 13.5% jump in a year. The jump was expected, but it came in better than expected. Meanwhile, Japanese imports rose too, but by less than expected. And we should keep an eye on the spreading impacts of excessive heat in northern India. Its inability to cool at night is life-threatening for many. The spreading heat emergency has also hit Saudi Arabia, and hundreds have reported died in their Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca. In China, their central bank signal would be getting more aggressive in the way it supports their economy, a tacit move that acknowledges the tough spot they're in. They're likely to start trading government bonds in the secondary market, a change of how the central bank injects money into the economy and regulates liquidity. They're also likely to shift to a single short-term rate to guide markets, just like almost all other central banks. And tensions near the Philippines and waters claimed by China are getting worrisome, with China's forces capturing a Philippines resupply vessel temporarily and forcing it away from a Philippines outpost. China's illegal claims, based on their very dodgy 9-dash line sea grab, threatens a major international crisis there. In Australia, the RBA has been looking at the buy now, pay later system and doesn't like what it sees. Their key concerns are not so much on the unregulated credit side, but rather on the fee side. They say buy now, pay later fees average 3.5% of the transaction costs, compared to 0.4% for debit cards and 0.8% for credit cards. Buy now, pay later makes Visa and MasterCard look good. A crackdown is coming, allowing retailers to pass on those costs to customers. Until now, the buy now, pay later industry has prohibited that. But the RBA needs new powers to make that change. Join us at 10.45 this morning when the first quarter 2024 GDP result will be released for New Zealand. Markets are picking we exited recession on an overall basis, but with essentially no growth. Of course, on a per capita basis, this result is likely to be a bit grim. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 4.23% and up one basis point from this time yesterday. And the price of gold will start today virtually unchanged, up an insignificant dollar to $2,329 an ounce. And oil prices are unchanged at $80.50 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is still at $84.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today a little softer, at just on 61.3 US cents. Against the Aussie, we're a quarter cent softer at 91.9 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're marginally softer at 57.1 Euro cents. But that all means our trade weight index starts today up 30 basis points, at just on 71.2. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $65,049 and up 0.7% from yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has again been modest at plus or minus 1.3%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston and we'll do this again tomorrow.